How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Ever 17 once again. Still working our way towards the true end and uh, getting more revelations every episode along the way. It's unreal, actually. What is this shit on my mouse pad? Um, <laughs> every episode is revealing new things. Now we've learned about Takeshi not being Takeshi, but he's taken on the name of Takeshi, but he was the kid from the last one, and the kid from this one is a different person to the kid from the last one. The kid from the last one was Takeshi. And the kid from this one is the old Takeshi's son. Anyway, I'm sure it'll all come together at the end. I hope it'll sit down and explain it to me because uh, it's getting hard to follow. Takeshi and you leaned against the wall of the corridor. He had certain situations that he couldn't escape from, certain things that kept him alive. You finally spoke. A small voice bounced off the cold iron walls of the partitioning. Things? Before he died and everyone was off searching, I had the chance to talk with him some. I tried to get him to stop because he seemed like he was suffering, but he said talking to me made him, made him feel better, so... I see. What did he talk about? Um, before coming to IBF, he said that he'd been involved with some project to develop Lemu's system. He was one of the staff that had engineered Lemu's management software, meaning that Himmel, Le MMIH, and Sora, everything he made went into Lemu. Being a programmer, the system here at Lemu was like his own child. So he was worried about his children? Yeah, that must have been it. Worrying about his children is what helped him live a while longer. She closed her eyes and let out a small sigh. And as if shrugging off the heaviness of the moment, she bolted away from the wall and said, Oh yeah, there was one thing I heard from him that, he was at, that I was able to check up on. What's that? Sora's location. Sora's... The Sora we know isn't in Incel Null. Huh? We know that MMIH is central processing unit. The main computer is on the floating island. It seems that everything that's happening here on Lemu is saved in Lemu's memory storage. What? Livelik Pharmaceutical keeps an original system program for Sura Akanagasaki. So even if they lose a copy here at Lemu, it won't hurt them at all. So basically, it is possible to make many different versions of the Sura system. Even the Sura here might just be a copy. But think about it. Sora is Sora, right? There's only one Sora that we know, right? So, what's the only thing that separates the Sora we know from other Soras? Uh, memory. The only thing that we and the Sora here share is memory. That's it. Takeshi tapped repeatedly on the area between his eyebrows and opened his mouth. Really? If Sora's memory is here at Lemo, then the Sora we know is... Sora is in Himmel. You nodded. She touched Takeshi's shoulder lightly and traced her finger across his chest and went back to the examination room. Left by himself, Takeshi started wandering aimlessly off down the corridor. He turned right at a corner, then left, tracing the wall with his hand as he kept walking. And he ended up in front of IBF's large pool. There was already someone there. Sugimi was looking at the gentle ripples in the pool. As if she was drawn... As, she, as if she had drawn him there, Takeshi went to stand by Sugimi. Huh? Takeshi stopped suddenly. I I know my usual reading is pretty atrocious. <laughs> I tend to make a lot of mistakes. And I don't do, like, second takes. You know, if I fuck it up, I fuck it up. But I feel like I'm worse at this game than any other game. It might be because the translation's a bit funny. <laughs> but I feel like I'm worse here than, than usual. Apologies for that. He turned around and stared at the spot on the wall. Hmm? Takeshi, what's wrong? Tsugumi noticed Takeshi. Following Takeshi's gaze, she turned her eyes to stare over at the same spot on the wall. There was nothing there. Wait. No, that's not true. Both of the lines of sight were pointed at me. Takeshi and Tsugumi were looking at me right then. Uh, I don't know, I just... I felt like somebody was, you know, staring at me. Takeshi turned back and said this to Sugumi. Sugumi tilted her head quizzically. And with her head turned to the side, she narrowed her eyes and searched Takeshi's face. Takeshi? Your nose is bleeding. You got a nosebleed, huh? Takeshi hurriedly put his hand to his nose. His upper lip was wet with something. Hey, you okay? Sugumi looked worriedly at Takeshi's face. Fine, fine, I'm, fi I'm fine. Looking up and wiping under his nose, Takeshi replied, I wasn't thinking anything sexual. Absolutely. Positively. It's not like that. I, I don't care about that. 
Well, alright then. The blood wouldn't stop flowing. Uh, I look like such a dork. Who cares what you look like? I care. I care. Looking like this in front of you, I... <sighs> yeah. Ugh. Takeshi spat out blood. Copious amounts of fresh blood poured from his nose and mouth. And simultaneously, his knees buckled. Huh? What's... What's wrong with me? Takeshi looked at his blood-covered hands and blinked. His legs swayed unsteadily and the colour dr quickly drained from his face. What's this about? Blood. Blood. Blood is... Takeshi? Takeshi, hang in there. N no, hey, I I'm fine. D don't worry, Sugumi. Don't worry. What are you talking about? You're covered in blood, Takeshi. We need to get you to the examination room and get you looked at right away. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tsugumi supported Takeshi with his shoulder and pulled him along to the entrance of the corridor. From the entrance, a single shadow jumped out. It was Yubisei Harukana. Tsugumi, Takeshi, the kid, he's in, he's in bad shape. After that, using LMRI, they found out that Takeshi, Yu, and the young Kaburaki were all infected with the TF flower virus. Using the orange serum, the three of them were given shots. After that, their symptoms improved a bit, but the severity of the situation had still not changed. So, what do we do about Coco? Takeshi asked us as she pressed down on the disinfectant stained gauze. She's still undergoing the oxygen treatment, so we can't open the pod. It looks like the treatment is progressing normally. As long as she's in there, I don't think her condition will get much worse. As soon as she's finished, we'll give her a shot as well. Yeah, okay. Takeshi's face was still pale. It was hard to believe that it had ever been the colour of a living person. His pupils were cloudy, his eyelids swollen, and sweat flowed freely from his face. Wiping away sweat, Takeshi wandered around the room. I'm not sure how long our condition will hold with just one shot. Hey you, do you think we can do anything after it stops working? You were sitting at the computer terminal silently typing on the keyboard. You, tell me what we can expect. Don't talk to me, I can't concentrate. Alright, alright. I'm trying my best. But someone has put a lock on the communications protocol, and we can't make contact with the surface. But every once in a while, I found some communication data that crosses through. If we could just release that lock, or... Well, anyway, we just might be able to get through it somehow. At least it's better than Lemu, where we had no way of making contact. Alright, show me what you got, genius. Okay. And looking like the dead, they both smiled weakly at one another. Brownish bloodstains were smeared on their mouths. Takeshi left you to go look at the monitor set in the co into the column. The monitor displayed the status of the capsule pods. How's Coco doing? Sugumi came up beside Takeshi and asked. She's in serious but stable condition. Really? According to the information on the monitor, Coco still had four more hours until she could come out. The pod was filled with high pressure oxygen. And until that time was over, Coco couldn't leave. Hey Takeshi? Sugumi whispered to Takeshi softly. What? Don't you think it's strange that I don't need any serums? Huh? Uh, yeah, well, now that you mention it. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine. Oh, well, that's a relief. But you don't think it's strange? I'm the only one who doesn't show any symptoms of the TF Blau virus. Isn't that odd? Well, no, I mean... Takeshi smiled softly and continued. You said it yourself. The function of your immune system and metabolic efficiency are remarkable, and your Ptolemyers never stop regenerating. Meaning, it's, well, you know... Yeah. She looked down slightly and puffed at her cheeks. She raised her eyes. Sugimi walked over to you and murmured, You, would you scan me? Would you check me? Cure virus P carrier. These words appeared on LMRO display soundlessly. The screen showed that Sugimi was a cure virus carrier. The TF Blau virus was also in Sugimi's body, as with the others. But her genetic makeup had been altered by Cure, and because of the peculiar functioning of her immune system, antibodies had been generated instantly, driving out TF Blau. Cure. Sugimi had begun, gone beyond the normal human capability. She'd mentioned that she was special. Successful cases of genetic manipulation were probably exceedingly rare. Cure. Looking at the results of the LMRI scan, you nodded. So the Cure virus really did exist. You know about it too? You know about it, you? I found it in Lemu's database, but before that I'd heard about it once from a certain person. A certain person? Someone called Shigeto Morino. He's a world-renowned geneticist. He told me about it when I met him. Wait, isn't he the one? Oh, he's the one who made her daughter, or her clone, whatever. 
In this world, there are probably at least two or more types of the cure virus. So this must be one of them. Yes, me. I'm the carrier of the cure. I carry the cure virus. I'm already not like other people, but so give me a while, G. I already told Takeshi, but I also wanted you to know you. Besides, it's easier to have the machine show you than explain it myself, right? That's why you wanted me to scan you. Yeah. Well, I don't suppose anything changes now that you found out. Sugimi laughed at herself derisively. Sugimi? <laughs> it's strange, Takeshi. Biting her lips, Sugimi was trying her best to laugh. But there's something even stranger than me. This machine knew right away that I had the cure virus. Why do you think? There can only have been a few documented cases of cure in the whole world. Why do you think this computer could scan it so quickly? Because this is where you were researched on? Takeshi's pupils dilated momentarily. He squinted and replied slowly. Oh, so that's it. Leiblick Pharmaceutical already knew about the existence of the cure virus. Just like T.F. Blau. Yep. Sugimi turned up to face the ceiling and closed her eyes saying, That's why I came here. To Lemu. To IBF. I had to come here. I wanted to know the true gravity of the seriousness of my existence. The seriousness of my The seriousness of my existence was... But... I've come all the way and nobody's here. So stupid. I'm so stupid. From her closed eyes a single tear fell. It suddenly became dark. From the darkness I could hear only voices. Hey Takeshi, have you ever hated any everything? And thought you wanted to die? No. I wondered to myself, where am I? Was I inside of someone? I couldn't see anything. All I could hear were voices coming from somewhere. Passionate voices. An agonizing scream. We aren't gonna we aren't gonna die. We're gonna make it out of here. We don't have time to waste here. I'm gonna get out of this hell. I can save you. I'll prove it. Everyone. I'm gonna save everyone who's here. I won't let a single one die. The voice cut out suddenly, and the darkness cleared like a fog. My vision returned gradually. The scene spread out gradually before me, but I had still lost my center. Other than a sense of impending disaster and the stagnant, heavy air around me, I could feel nothing else. Look. Stare intently. Why don't you even bother looking? It was a doubt that crept through my mind, but it faded quickly. All I could do was watch the events in this world as they passed by. I watched. I was an existence that could only watch. All I was was a perspective. It's time for desperate measures. Takeshi said this suddenly. As I shone with a dull light. It seemed that the serum was losing its effect. Although Takeshi, you and the young Kabu Kaburaki seemed to be maintaining their composure, their breathing was ragged. Well, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really tell, but smallpox, penicillin, snake antivenom? You're pretty smart, this should make sense to you, right? No way. It's our only chance. Your body is creating antibodies to the TF Blau virus, we'll use that. If we can get those antibodies, there's a small chance we can fight off the TF Blau virus. It's too dangerous. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make antibodies and vaccines that work? There's almost no chance. If you, if you make even the slightest mistake, you could kill all of you. If we don't do anything, we're dead anyway. Sugimi's expression froze. You and the young Kabudaki raised their heads to look at Takeshi. That's right. If we don't do anything, we're dead. And if that's the case, it's better we take this risk, no matter how small our chances of survival. Uh, <coughs> Fresh blood flew from Takeshi's mouth. A crimson mist danced in the air and floated away. Damn, not again. I can't believe how lame this is. Takeshi hurriedly wiped his mouth. What? You don't get to laugh at me, Sugimi, for being such a dork? Come on, laugh, Sugimi. Takeshi held out his blood-covered hand towards Sugimi. Stop it, stay away from me. Stop, I don't want to. Shaking her head fiercely, Sugimi backed away. Takeshi, listen, Takeshi. Sugimi, you opened her mouth to talk from where she was seated at the terminal. There's a simple lab in the back of the examination room. I saw a centrifuge and a machine for refining serum. We can probably use that to safely and quickly extract the TF Blau antibodies. If this thing can scan for TF Blau, it could probably scan for the antibodies and extract them. She continued to talk in a low, calm voice. Sugimi, please help us. I'm asking you. Stay away from me, Takeshi. Don't touch me. Takeshi had backed her all the way to the bed. You want to live with this disease? Once you got the cure virus, you can't go back. Do you have any idea what you're in for? Well, we don't know that the cure virus will infect everyone. Even you. You said you were special, right? Please, I'm begging you. Let me take a gamble so that everyone can live. You won't be a normal person anymore. I don't want everyone to have to live with the pain that I have. I, I know that. 
You fool, you fool. You know I can't fight you. Sugimi so ran into Takeshi's arms. She nestled up close and began to cry with all her might. If you mess this up, I'll never forgive you, Takeshi. It's okay, it's gonna be okay. I promise you, we're all gonna get out of this, okay? Oh. Sugimi was crying. Her breathing uneven, her shoulders shaking, Sugimi wept fiercely on Takeshi's chest. Takeshi embraced her thin body. Her muffled cries continued to echo throughout the cold room. After waiting for Sugimi to compose herself, they carried out the procedure. Drawing blood from Sugimi's arm, they extracted the antibodies and gave shots to Takeshi, Yu, and the young Kaburaki. They weren't able to give Koko a shot because she was still in the pot undergoing treatment. And it would still be a while before she could leave. And they made another dose of antibodies when Koko was ready and put it in the equipment storage container on the desk. Almost an hour had passed since the shot. The antibodies didn't seem to be having any effect. The three infected patients were lying, worn out on their beds. Sugimi said something briefly to Takeshi and went back to Lomo. I'm going to get Chami and bring him back, were the words she left him with. Takeshi nodded weakly and closed his eyes. Suddenly, from his barely conscious state, a noise from the speaker reached Takeshi's ears. Come in. IBF3, please respond. This is the emergency rescue team from the Maritime Defense Force. We know what happens now. Takeshi goes to get her. They come, save everybody else. And then Takeshi and Sugimi leave on the submersible. Takeshi rushed over to the terminal. Hello? This is the IBF Infirmary. Over. IBF 3, I repeat, this is the emergency rescue team from the Maritime Defense Force. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We hear you. Loud and clear. Voices spilled out from the other end of the line. Hey, there are survivors down there. I can't believe it. It's amazing. We're sending a rescue team immediately. Can you access the pool in IBF 3? Uh, uh, yeah, it should be fine. Do you know how many survivors there are and where they're located? In the examination room there are five. No, six. Six, I copy. A rescue team is headed there in a private sector salvage vessel. When it arrives, I want you to follow the directions and get out of there. How long till they get here? They're going as fast as they can, but it'll take about an hour. But if something goes wrong, there should be a small deep exploration submarine left in the research facility. I hate to make you do this, but I want you to escape to that area. Something goes wrong? What do you mean? The petition strength threshold is already being exceeded. If one section implies, there's a risk that the other area could collapse and start sinking. A sinking could, start, could ensue. If that happens, we think there's a high possibility the heavy pieces could crash down on the research facility. Alright, I understand. Of course, we're doing everything we can to get to you before that happens. We're heading there, no matter what, so please hold on a little longer. The connection cut out suddenly. Uh, hey, wait a sec. Takeshi hit the call button repeatedly, but there's no answer. Damn, we can't open up communications from this side. Takeshi began to pour through the manual on the side of the communication terminal. Ah, here it is. Following the instructions in the manual, he used the control panel to call up information on the monitor. It's a small electric submersible. The submarine was in a separate sealed sector attached to IBF. The specification said it was a neutral buoyancy miniature submarine for saturation diving. How important he import the important thing was it could be brought over to the pool by remote control. That's what I mean by the weird translation, like that that he is actually a the, you know? Just missing letters and stuff like that. It messes me up so easily. If things get dangerous, I guess they want us to board this. He quickly went about setting up the remote control program so that they could move the submarine at a moment's notice, if necessary. Alright. What we have to do now is get Sugimi and Sora over here. The second Takeshi said this, suddenly a low metallic crashing sound reverberated throughout the installation. The sound seemed to come from above us. An alarm sounded from the terminal when the screen changed. Warning, Lemu hull breach. Flooding. Lemu? This is bad. This means Sugumi and Sora. Takeshi ran into the corridor. But it was only slight, but the floor was trembling. He suddenly seemed to get dizzy and lost his balance, crashing into a wall. Holding his fingers to his temples, Takeshi took his head to shook his head to clear it. I still gotta go. I have to go. Staggering while he ran, Takeshi took off. His legs moved as if he couldn't distinguish up from down, but still he kept running. He stumbled into the elevator. The lift he was on started moving up. 270 feet, 240, 210. He ran from the lift to the compression chamber. Takeshi hit the intercom button violently. Sora, Sora! T Takeshi, what are you... Takeshi waved to Sora as she appeared outside the window. Hey, long time no see. What are you doing here? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I came back. What's the damage? It's flooding its white stock. The warehouse area has been breached and 
Cracks are beginning to form in the elevator shaft. The situation is serious. There's almost six inches of flooding in almost all of the corridors. Where's Sugumi? She's trapped in the infirmary. What about the door? The electronic lock has been released, but it won't open because of the water pressure. Yeah. Takeshi, I'm going to start decompressing the chamber. How long will it take? It'll complete. I'll complete this as soon as possible. I need to know how much time. If I hurry, 12 hours. 12 hours? Isn't that that long? If we don't dissolve the nitrogen in your blood, you'll get decompression sickness. I don't care, open that door now. I can't do that. If we don't act fast, Sugumi is dead. If we open that door now, due to the rapid decompression, the nitrogen in your bloodstream will form bubbles causing blood clots, and in the worst case, I don't care. Get that door open now. I can't, it's too... Looking around, Takeshi's eyes fell on an emergency escape lever on the inside of the chamber. Without hesitating, he pulled it down and kicked the door. There was a horrible noise, as though all the air inside his head ex inside had exploded. Takeshi's body was thrown from the room, along with the high-pressure gas that had been built up inside. He was tossed like a piece of confetti, sliding and rolling along the floor, only to stop when he crashed into the wall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Takeshi twisted in agony. He flailed his four limbs as though he were a man gone insane. Oh, oh, oh. From his unnatural contorting position on the floor, Takeshi began vomiting. Takeshi? Takeshi, you okay? Well, it looks like I'm still alive. Takeshi crawled weakly over the floor. He crawled and stood, fell again and rose again, then fell backward. Repeating this process over and over, he finally made it to the door and said, leaning his shoulder on the wall. Don't you stop me, you hear? No matter what you say, I'm going. Alright, Takeshi. It seems like you've made up your mind. I'll stay here on Himmel to keep track of the situation at Limo and send updates to your PDA. I'll do what I can to stop the partitions from falling. I'll see that this place stays together, even for a little while longer, so... Promise me that you'll come back here with Sugumi. It's a promise. And Land saying that, he laughed weakly. Running up the stairs, he looked down at his PDA. There was a life reading in the infirmary. The map showed that the surrounding corridors were flooded, and there was no way to access the area. Arriving at white stuff, he threw himself into the water. In order to reach the corridor connecting the infirmary, Takeshi dove. At this point, there was no way to access it without swimming. Takeshi turned the PDA's backlight on. It shed a weak light on the area before him. Maybe he realized that there wasn't any point, but Takeshi turned off the light and kept swimming in total darkness. He swam and kept swimming. Takeshi propelled himself forward as though possessed. There was no sign of fear or unease in the way he moved. He fiercely tore at the wall of, wall of water surrounding him, progressing steadily forward. He was being reckless, perhaps even acting insane, but he was willing to sacrifice it all for what he was convinced he had to do. And neither the water nor the intense pressure could defeat the power of his faith and courage of that conviction. He kept swimming on and on strongly, purposefully, heading for the light. Takeshi sucked in air greedily as he brought his head out of the water. Ignoring his burning lungs, he quickly climbed up the open hole of the elevator shaft and began scrambling toward the infirmary. Sugumi? Sugumi? She was in the corner of the room, hugging her knees to herself. At her feet was a slightly wet, furry figure of Chami. Takeshi? What? Why? Sugumi opened her eyes wide. What are you surprised about, Sugumi? I came back, right now. I came for you. Well, I was a bit late, but Takeshi scratched his nose. You idiot, what are you doing here? Do you want to die? Listen, Takeshi laughed as he spoke. I came back for something I forgot. Uh, yeah, that's it. You forgot? Pick it up, Charmy, in both hands. She stood up slowly. Yeah, left it here. Silly me. My irreplaceable, more important to me than anything else, friend. How... How did you get it? She looked at Takeshi as if she still couldn't believe he was really there. Well, I'm a good swimmer. Actually, in a 25 meter pool, I made it down and back once. I kicked off the wall coming back, but still... Takeshi mimed swimming as he spoke. Wait, I think I just beat my record a while ago. Hey, do you remember the furthest I ever swam underwater? Fif 51 meters. She answered, her expression beginning to break down. Yeah. You think I'd die in a place like this? I mean, I still haven't gotten enough abuse from you yet. I want to hear what you've got to say from here on out. Yeah. So, I came for you, Sugumi. Takeshi? Takeshi? They both ran toward each other. Reaching out their hands to one another, they came together. And in the center of the infirmary, they hugged each other, embracing firmly. Riding on Sugumi's shoulder was Chami. Chami snorted and looked at the two. Having rescued Sugumi from the infirmary, Takeshi made it safely back to Himmel. Sora was waiting for them in the room. Takeshi, Sugumi, I prepared the chamber for you to get, insi get inside quickly. What's the rush, Sora? Although Takeshi was out of breath, he waved the flustered Sora off with his hands. Come on, you have to hurry. Relax, still got one more... Th 
One more thing I've forgotten. Forgotten what? This. Takeshi pointed to a Himmel cons Himmel's console. The, mon the following words were written on the monitor. Will Commoner let MMIH login TY. LMRSDS 4913A Sura Akanagasaki. Oh my god. German words. Suddenly there was an intense flash of light. In the blinding flood of light, a voice could be heard. I was able to finish the transfer just in time. The last password and name TY. Tanaka Yuichi. Where is this? I wondered. Was I inside someone? I couldn't see anything. All I could hear was some voices coming from somewhere. A warm voice. A murmuring filled with peace. I was in Himmel, along with Sora's memory. It's on that terabyte disc. Thank you, Dad. A voice cut out with a crackle. The light faded. Color gradually returned to Takeshi's field of vision. When Color had finally returned, Takeshi opened his mouth. Ha! He was simple. And letting out a strange shout, Takeshi pounded the enter key on the console. A round, flat wafer shot out of the disc drive. It was a single terabyte disc made out of polycarbonate. Okay, I'm taking this with me. Had Takeshi been able to hear Yu's voice? He stuffed the disc in his pocket. Yes. Taking a side glance at the dumbfounded Sora, Takeshi went along with Sugimi to the other side of the glass. Into IBF's compression chamber. <sighs> Sugimi slumped over in her chair, breathing with her whole body. Whew. Takeshi breathed deeply and looked out of the side of the control room onto the other side of the window. The door to the chamber sealed and compression started. Sora? I guess this means goodbye for a while. Sora was standing still on the other side of the chamber. Smiling softly, Sora shook her head left and right. No, this isn't goodbye. I didn't say goodbye. Yeah, me neither. I guess she returned his smile. I don't exist. And yet I'm everywhere. There'll be a time when we meet again, I'm sure of it. So please, don't ask me anything now. Okay, I understand now. I don't know how, but I understand now. That the only place to find you is here, yet I can find you anyway. Yeah. Oh, and when you hit a button, don't forget to say keep it simple. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'll remember. That's a promise. My name is Professor. Thank you. The RSD image started to warp and break up. A fog enveloped Sora from behind. Sora's image changed to a rainbow hue. And then even the rainbow started to fade. Sora's form disappeared. Takeshi watched it all happen and nodded as though he'd confirmed something. Compression complete. Takeshi and Sugumi loaded into the elevator and headed back to the research facility. It's quiet. Yeah, you're right. The flooding should have been fairly advanced in the area above them. It was hard to know if any of the sections had collapsed yet, but for the moment everything was normal at IBF. On the surface of the pool there was not even a ripple. Uh, what's wrong? The time. We're past the scheduled time. What schedule? Actually, there's a rescue team on their way. Rescue? Yeah, they call themselves the Maritime Defense Force, I think. You was able to open up a communications line, so we got a hold of Intel Null. And talking this way, they made their way to the examination room. They opened the door and went inside. Ah! Uh, they aren't here, nobody's here. Sugimi raised her voice, but there was nobody in the room to respond. Takeshi checked each of the capsule pods, but they were all empty. Yeah. You, the kid, Coco, that old guy, they're all gone. Where'd they go? Hey, hold on. I'm sure the rescue team found them. Wait, the old guy's dead. Just then, a recognisable voice came over the speaker. This is Intel Null Control. Please respond. Takeshi jumped over to the terminal and hit the talk button. This is examination room in IBF3. Over. Thank goodness, that's where you were. A little while ago, we got a message from dispatch team that they couldn't find you. You got us worried there. I'm sorry, I was out for a bit. We were able to rescue the other three people in the examination room, and they've been cared for in the salvage vessel. Is everyone okay? We can't say for sure, the conditions are serious. We're fighting against time. The submersible is going to surface soon, and we'll transfer them to a floating medical center. Okay, you take care of them. How many people are there with you? Two, including me. The other person didn't make it? Roger. We'll send them a team back there as soon as we can. But there is a possibility that the team won't be able to approach IBF if it starts to break up. I've got the exploration vessel standing by. I can call it here by remote control, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to have to ask you to use it, but there's nothing else we can do. We'll do the best we can. Whatever happens, you hang in there. Roger. And after that, the communication's cut out. What's that supposed to mean? You weren't listening? All well, this would be for nothing if everyone died while they were waiting for us. 
The rescue team decided to put a higher priority on getting you, the kid, and Coco to the hospital than waiting for us. Yeah, you're right. The colour in Sugimi's face slowly returned to normal, and his sense of panic faded. Well, I might just take a nap until the next bus comes. But bus? If you think a bus is going to be late, pull a cab for me, will you? It's a taxi? What are you talking about, Takeshi? If you push that button, a small submarine will come over by remote control. Our very own private taxi should come here from another area of IBF. Okay. Anyway, I'm just glad that everyone's alright. Yeah. A look of relief flooded softly over his face. I'm just so glad. Like a marionette that had had its strings cut, Takeshi's body collapsed. T Takeshi? Sugimi ran over to Takeshi and struggled to hold him up. She shook him by the shoulders, but Takeshi would not wake up. He was breathing, and his heartbeat seemed normal, although he felt slightly hot. It didn't seem like his life was in danger. Tsugumi carried Takeshi over to a bed, and placed her head on his chest, and closed her eyes. The light sound of their breathing gradually took on the same timing, and softly filled the room. They fell into a deep sleep. At the same time, I woke up suddenly. Alright, we're back to the kid in this timeline, but that's pretty much the end of the Takeshi thing. So, so both Takeshi endings were canon, sort of. He saves Sora on the disc, on the terabyte disc, and then they're leaving through the submersible. He sacrifices himself to make the submersible float so that Tsugumi will survive. Right? Cool, cool. I imagine we'll see the rest of that again anyway, but uh, I want to know how the kids' ending is going to turn out then. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking it out for me, and I'll see you in the next one.